Hello and welcome to another review on Anime Every Day. In this video, I'll be reviewing the anime series Eureka 7 AO. When people think a sequel, they think great, another season that'll take off from where season 1 left us. And that's normally the case with most shows, but not with Eureka 7. The original Eureka 7 was 50 episodes long, the same length as two normal anime seasons. And Eureka 7 ended, it was finished, the conclusion was met and the series was over. So this leaves the writers in a tricky situation. Do we just carry on where we left, or do we take a new approach? Eureka 7 AO was the sequel to the 2005 classic Eureka 7, though it didn't just take off from where Eureka 7 left us. To call AO a sequel isn't exactly correct. It shared a lot of links and similarities between the original series, but it's by no means a sequel. AO was really its own entity, and that's how it should be watched and how it should be reviewed. There's no point going into AO thinking you're going to get another series of Eureka 7. Yes, it's going to have some very strong similarities because it's set in the same universe and it's made by the same people, but it's unfair to compare these two shows as equals. In this review, I'm going to review the anime series Eureka 7 AO as its own anime series. Yes, obviously I'm going to mention the links between the original show, but this is not a review of Eureka 7 Part 2. So keep that in mind. Think of it as Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Bebop. Both very similar in a lot of aspects, but both completely different shows. Eureka 7 AO is set on Earth, 20 years after the original Eureka 7 storyline. Our main protagonist is Al Fokai, and although it doesn't actually tell us that there's links between him and the original characters, it's quite obvious. Mysterious father, similar character design, and blue hair on the cover art. Al lives on a small island in Okinawa. It's quite quiet, but you do get the sense that there's something else going on, something that the locals don't exactly realise. One day a mysterious creature, to both the viewers and the characters, attacks the island. At this point in the story, we're not exactly sure why the creature is attacking, but we can kind of tell it's not just a random coincidence. Anyway, during this mishap, Al finds himself piloting the Nirvosh. Yes, the Nirvosh. Our first big nostalgia kick. Naturally, Al is really good at piloting the Nirvosh and goes on to save the island. Obviously, this is just a very, very start of a long, in-depth story, and I won't go any further into the story to avoid spoilers. A lot of stuff happens after this and you really need to watch the show to get a sense of, of everything really. AO is one of those stories where a lot of people will just miss most of the story. Yes, there is the basic main storyline, but there's a lot of interesting politics and story development that goes on that you might not see at first glance. I think this is one of the main reasons why AO was given a lot of stick. I think they were trying to stuff as much into one series as possible, but I don't think the story deserves the stick that it's gotten. Like I said, there's not much I can talk about while keeping the story spoiler free, so you're just going to have to take my word until you've watched it yourself. One problem I did have with the story of AO is the amount of times they sacrificed valuable storytelling time to show off blatant throwbacks to the original series. Don't get me wrong, the nostalgic feelings are nice, but when you're throwing away valuable story just so you can get more sales and a higher rating, it kinda sucks. AO suffers from this big time, especially towards the end. Yes, from a marketing and sales point of view, they made the right decision, but from the point of view from an above average Eureka 7 fan like myself, if I really wanted nostalgic feelings, I'd just go watch the original series again. I'd much rather they just focused on making the story as best they could, a story which overall was pretty good. At points it went very deep into topics and it was very heavy with content. With the new series came a whole new cast of characters. Some I liked, some not so much. Some played a big part in the story and some were victims of marketing much like the story. Again, this was probably another route that fed the tree of disappointment for a lot of fans. Since there were so many characters to develop in such a short amount of time, a lot of characters were robbed of any real development at all, thus leaving fans empty and unconnected to their favourite characters. Ao, our main character, is fairly similar to Renton from the original series. He isn't by any means a badass and at some points he seems a little bit weak and helpless, but overall he was an enjoyable character. I just wish he was used less of a bridge to the original series because I think he had a lot more to offer. Truth was the bad guy in the show, and to my surprise was actually developed. I personally thought that Truth was sent in a brilliant direction. The way he actually tied into the story far surpassed my expectations of him. Probably one of the better characters in AO. 
but he was merely a fraction of the amount of characters that should have been developed. Similar to the story, there were way too many shortcuts made and important pieces left out for me to give this any really strong praise, but there was a lot of potential there. The animation and the soundtrack were by far the best parts of this show. Bones were the studio in charge of the animation, unexpectedly they'd done a really great job. They kept the classic Aureka 7 art style, bright colours and, and really brilliantly detailed backgrounds. AO was set in a tropical setting and they really made use of this. The scenery was done to a very high standard and provided a spectacular atmosphere for the show. Of course AO had its fair share of mech battles and they were animated to the same quality as the rest of the show. Due to the show revolving a lot around the mech fights, it was very important that they put a lot of quality into making them look great. So the character designs were very detailed and pretty unique. Unlike the character development, a lot of time went into making the characters look different. I especially liked the designs of the secrets. It wasn't something I would have expected from Bones, but it looked really great. The soundtrack, composed by Koji Nakamura, was also done to a very high standard. There was a great mix of really upbeat battle tracks and slower, more immersive tracks. I can't fault the soundtrack that much. Each track on the OST is worthy of a listen, and they all fit into the show nicely. Both of the openings were really great, and of course it was nice to see Flo returning for their second Eureka 7 opening. Eureka 7 AO. Is it a good show? Yes. Should you watch it? Yes. It gets a lot of stick because people compare it to the original series, but AO can stand as its own series, and it was still better than 90% of the anime that came out alongside it, but you can watch this show without watching the original. I'm personally really glad they made this series. It's a shame people complained that it wasn't similar enough to the original series, and then when they made it similar to the original series, they complained that it was too similar to the original series. But when does the opinion of the majority ever matter anyway? So that's all from my review of Eureka 7 AO, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this review, clicking the like button and or the share button is very appreciated. And if you want to see more reviews, you can click subscribe or any of the links on the screen. Thank you very much for watching, I've been Anime Every Day and I hope to see you in the next review. Goodbye.